As a wildlife biologist, I travel the world in search of rare endangered animals, some even declared extinct, in hopes of returning them to a sustainable population. Of all the challenges my team and I face, nothing has done more harm to our mission again and again than wet markets. Wet in this case means live, as opposed to dry goods, and wet markets exist across the globe, providing fresh meat and even livestock to communities that need it. But high demand mixed with little oversight can create a scenario for wet markets to do business with the black market. Over the last eight years, I've investigated wet markets for illegally selling protected animals. These are the most invasive turtle species in the world, um, and they're actually from North America. They're getting closed up here. These are African guinea fowl. These are from where I'm from in Zimbabwe. It's crazy to see them here in Indonesia. This is the Stonetown fish market, and you can see there's everything here from freshwater catfish to big jacks to three giant tiger shark heads. But I soon noticed another potential danger, the lack of sterilization or any protections from cross-contamination. Various species butchered on the same surface, using the same tools, with the animals stored live and caged tightly in their own filth. Little did I know, a live animal market just like this one was about to change the world. This is the largest species of bat in the world. In this part of the world, they're sold as a food animal. A wet market in Wuhan, China, where COVID-19 allegedly first passed to humans from bats. Less than a year later, we've passed 25 million confirmed cases worldwide and are nearing a million dead. To gain some insight on potential pandemic connections to wet markets, I first spoke with Dr. Christian Walser, professor of conservation medicine and an internationally recognized specialist on human livestock wildlife interfaces. Initially, all COVID cases were linked to the market and it was only with subsequent data that you could see that some of the cases were not directly linked. So once we knew it was linked to the, the market, we were um, on high alert. I reached out to some of my virologists' friends at NIH and other places and asked what they thought. I did get an email from a friend of mine who's a friend and a colleague who's a top um, virologist telling me that he was scrambling back to the US, um, aborting his field work to get back to his lab here in the US. And he just wrote a short mail and said, this could be the big one. I remember I wrote back, really? <laughs> So what is really important to understand in these um, wildlife trading markets is that the animals are alive. And um, we're talking about really large industrial sized markets where you have hundreds of species of animals stacked on top of each other in tight quarters. You'll often have the, the wildlife stacked on top of domestic species, often poultry or pigs, for example. And because the animals are extremely stressed and the holding conditions are very problematic from a welfare point of view, the animals are shedding viruses all the time. Because they're alive, they're able to shed viruses. And this can be through um, saliva, urine, or fecal matter. And then in the end effect, they're also slaughtered on site. Um, so you'll buy the animal fresh, it's slaughtered on site. That means blood is exposed, internal organs are exposed. So this creates really the sort of cauldron of contagion, as we say. It's really perfect um, breeding ground for new pathogens. By sharing and documenting how wet markets are operating around the world, I'm hoping we can stop the next global pandemic before it happens as well as the often illegal and high extinction risk behaviors they support. 